Although Robert Lewandowski was snubbed of the Ballon d'Or this year, it sounds like he got a bit of redemption with the FIFA Pro World Player of the Year. Let's get right into it. Welcome to Talking Bayern, the one-stop shop for Bayern Munich content on YouTube. Today we'll be discussing the Team of the Year, the FIFA Pro World Eleven, as well as the FIFA Team of the Year. I just want to go through both. Um, I just love going through individual awards, as poorly organized as they are, as you can tell um, from the Ballon d'Or results. Uh, it's just fun to go through and analyze it. So first, I just wanted to go into the FIFA Team of the Year nominees. Obviously, um, these are, it's for the video game EA Sports FIFA 22, but of course, they're not supposed to be based off like their in-game cards or anything like that. They're supposed to be based off their, obviously, on-the-pitch talent and how well they played this year. So, you know, it really has nothing to do with how good they are in FIFA. So I'd say it's a pretty legitimate and respected um, team of the year. I'd say, especially for a video game, I think a lot of people, you know, give it some respect. And every year, FIFA, you know, announces a big, big list of nominees for, you know, for midfielders, attackers, defenders. So even some smaller names like Gunter, you know, were on these team of the year nominees list. But Bayern Munich was given five team of the year nominees. Um, if you can think quickly in your head who they would be, I mean, you can give, I'll give you 10 seconds to guess. Um, but the nominees are Alfonso Davies, Joshua Kimmich, Leon Gretzka, Thomas Muller, and Robert Lewandowski. And I would say, I would agree with those. Those are our five best players from this year. Uh, I didn't see Neuer in there. I mean, it, they do announce a very short list of goalkeepers. I think it was only six or seven. And, you know, there's players like Courtois, Ederson, Allison, Mendy, Donnarumma, uh, Mignon. So obviously some top, top names there. It would have been nice to see Neuer included. I think he's still the best goalkeeper in the world. I will say it wasn't Neuer's best year ever. Um, obviously, we conceded quite a bit of goals for our usual standards, but I still think he was really good. He doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Um, so he's definitely still one of the world's best. So I would have liked to see Neuer included. I still think he's a world-class goalkeeper. I think most people consider him one of the best in the world. I think no matter what league or team you cheer for, I think you know everyone has to consider Neuer a top-five goalkeeper in the world, maybe even higher. Um, as a Bayern fan, I respect him probably as still the best. My team of the year, um, unfortunately, I was too late. I would have put up a design on the screen, but unfortunately, I, I couldn't get a screenshot. I didn't vote um, in time. So unfortunately, I don't have a nice graphic on the screen, but you can just imagine it. Um, so in goalkeeper, I would go Eduard Mendy. I would pick him slightly over Donnarumma. I thought he was world-class for Chelsea this season, um, most of the Champions League. And they were just so, so good this year, Chelsea. I know they dropped off a bit um, at the end of 2021, but you know, ever since Tuchel took over, you know, and Mendy came in. It's been a, it's been a just a world class job from Chelsea, and obviously they're keeping balls out of the net. So obviously Mendy's doing his job at the back. I would go Alfonso Davies left back, Ruben Diaz and Marquinhos as my center backs, and at right back Yao Cancelo. I know he's playing um, left back quite a bit now, but um, you know this team of the years don't always have like it perfect. You know, perfect you know four three three. Um, so he could again be put as a left back, but yeah. For my midfield, I'm gonna have to go with obviously Thomas Muller. He's been absolutely world class in 2021. I mean, his assists are just crazy. He's scoring goals. He's doing well for Germany as well. I know he's made a return to the national team. I know he didn't have a great Euros, you know, I'm just going to come out and say it. But apart from that, he's been so, so good. Debatably, you know, the best midfielder of the year. He's right up there with Conte, um, who I'm also going to add, as well as De Bruyne. I know De Bruyne hasn't played as much. He's been, you know, given some more, you know, time off. I know Man City likes to rest their players quite a bit because they have the luxury to do so. They have such a, you know, extremely talented team. Um, but yeah, it's going to have to be Muller, Conte, and De Bruyne. I think all players are world-class, um, and yeah, it's those are all my three. Uh, Kimmich I'd like to throw in there too, but you know, I have to give Muller, and I don't think I can give two Bayern players, um, you know, considering we didn't win the Champions League. I don't think that would be you know realistic or fair. I'm not so keen on Jorginho. I know he won the Champions League with Chelsea. I know he won with Italy. I'm not saying he's a bad player, but I don't know. I just think um, there's some stuff in the pitch that he misses out on. I don't think he's you know the most perfect well-rounded midfielder. I think a player like Kimmich would be better suited. I know it wasn't Kimmich's best year ever, but I think Kimmich is so, so strong. I know he missed time, um, so I'm not going to, you know, fight somebody if they pick Jorginho over Kimmich. And then for my attackers, this was tough because obviously it had to be Robert Lewandowski. It, there was never any doubts it was going to be Lewandowski as my striker. Um, but my two pairings, obviously, was tough. We had Haaland, you know, Mbappe, Salah, Messi, Ronaldo. Um, I'm going to have to give credit where credit's due. I think Salah had an incredible half um, of the season in the, in the end of 2021. So, you know, it wasn't his best season ever. The beginning of 2021, and I think most people rank, you know, highly the beginning of the season. Obviously, Messi had such a poor, poor, poor performance for PSG so far this season. And, you know, he's still on the Ballon d'Or. Most people give a more emphasis on the, you know, first half of the year and the end of the season, kind of when the trophies start coming out. Um, but, you know, I'm still going to give Lionel Messi the nod. I would like to, give, you know, give, you know, Ronaldo or Haaland the nod. But 
I don't know. I'm still going to give respect to Messi. I think a lot of people will attack me if I don't um, give Messi. But as you know, as my 12th man, I'll throw Ronaldo in there. I think he's still world class. I know he's still the you know, top three player in the world, in my opinion. I think he's incredible. Um, you know, we can interchange Messi and Ronaldo in there, but I'll have to give Messi in the top three. And then moving on to the FIFA Pro World 11. So this was announced. A bit of a controversial one, as you know, most individual awards are. But we had Don Room and Net, um, but you know, really, really weird because you know the the best FIFA men's goalkeeper of the year was Eduard Mendy. So the exact same organization um, gave Don Room you know, the World 11 spot as goalkeeper, but they gave the men's goalkeeper to Mendy. So it's confusing because it's like, is the World 11 higher than the, you know, the best goalkeeper in the world? Is Mendy the best goalkeeper in the world or is the best goalkeeper not included in the World 11? You know, it makes sense that Mendy would be the best goalkeeper. You announced him as the men's goalkeeper, but then you don't include him in the World 11. It doesn't really make sense. I mean, I think what they meant to do was Mendy's the best, I guess. I don't know. It's just a really, really silly system. I don't get it. I don't why. I don't know why Donnarumma would be in the World Eleven if he wasn't the best, you know, goalkeeper of the year. But you know, sadly, none of the awards in this sport make any sense. Um, and then moving on in the back, we have David Alaba, Bonucci, and Diaz. Um, I don't see why Alaba won this. I know he's been good so far for Real Madrid, but you know, he didn't have a sounding year um, for Bayern at all. Uh, definitely one of our weakest defenders. Um, and I don't know. I just think he's overrated. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to, you know, completely rag on him, but, you know, I think he was better as a left back. I don't think he was, you know, really sound defensively in the center back position. Um, but obviously, FIFA Pro World 11 obviously, you know, rates the Spanish League players higher. I know we know that. I mean, you know, the BC, like the Bundesliga players, you know, rarely ever get nominated for awards. And Lewandowski's been snubbed from Ballon d'Ors twice now. Um, so they just don't want to get to give it to Bundesliga players. And clearly, Alaba left Germany for the right reason. He's getting awards now, um, and I think, you know, the fact he's not in Germany is helping it. As for the midfield, they went De Bruyne, Jorginho, and Conte. As for the attackers for the FIFA Pro World 11, it's, they have a weird formation. So it's a 3-3-4 with Haaland, Lewandowski, Messi, and Ronaldo up top. Um, bit of an odd one, as I said. Haaland in there is a bit of a surprise. You know, I definitely think Lewandowski should be in there. Obviously, they gave the world's best player of the year to Lewandowski, so congratulations to Lewandowski there. Um, but it's just so weird that, you know, the finalists for the FIFA um, Best Men's Player Award of the Year were Lewandowski, Messi, and Salah. So Salah wasn't even in the World Eleven, but he was one of the top three players in the world. Yeah, that just doesn't make any sense to me. I don't understand. Um, you know, maybe if they went for like a two-striker formation and Salah wasn't in there, that would make more sense because it'd be like, okay, well, they didn't have room for him. But, you know, they had four attackers and Salah was not in there. So it doesn't really make any sense in my mind. Um, but that is, you know, what FIFA Pro thinks clearly. So, you know, it's just crazy awards these days, but I thought it was, you know, worth bringing up and worth discussing. Uh, let me know who your, you know, world 11 and best 11 of the year would be in the comments below. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more Bayern Munich content like this in the future, please subscribe to this channel. Really appreciate all the support. So hope to see you all in the next one. Until then, mia sa mia.